Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is your boy Fitzmong TV here, aka Jalorn33. I'm trying something new on the channel here today. I am gonna be doing a live reaction slash read along to Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 6 C2. It just came out a little bit ago on Viz Media. I've been doing videos on the spoilers all weekend. I did a mini review to the chapter on Saturday, but uh, now we have the full panels, the full chat uh, translations, and all that good stuff. So, um, if you guys want me to continue doing this, you know, uh, if the video does well and you guys show a lot of positive support to it, I'll bring it back next month and we'll make this a new thing on the, uh, on the channel where we do, you know, these, uh, live read along slash reactions. It's basically like reacting to an anime episode, just, you know, it's manga version. So basically, we're going to read through the chapter here. We know this is a big chapter. It's called Edge of Defeat. So you guys can already have basically an idea of what's going to happen. We know Moro, he's in his new final form. He absorbed 73 without 73's permission, but he absorbed 73 last chapter, and now he's more stronger than ever. So how would our Z fighters um, be able to counter this? I don't expect them to be able to counter that, especially from what we know from the spoilers that came out the last couple days. So it's not going to be a uh, good one for the Z Fighters. So we'll see what happens here. So basically, chapter starts off, you know, um, Pickle asks, Has 73's power been added to your strength? And Moro's like, indeed. So Moro, by absorbing 73, was not only able to regain his original strength, which was something in itself, but he was also able to gain the strength of 73 on top of that. And Goku's like, crud, it's just one thing after another with this guy. So then we see Vegeta. Remember, Moro did uh, beat down Vegeta last chapter. Vegeta had Moro beat, but after Moro absorbed 73, he was able to send uh, Vegeta flying with Sam unconscious, but Vegeta, in a fit of rage, all the Z-Fighters are happy that Vegeta is still alive. They're all like, Vegeta! But they don't realize Vegeta's about to get his ass kicked, which made all the community mad. But just wait till what happens with Goku later on in the chapter. Vegeta's like, is that so? I'll tear you apart once again! And Vegeta goes flying at Moro in Super Saiyan Blue Evolved, but Moro dodges easily. And you can see here, Vegeta's getting more and more angry now that he cannot attack uh, Moro. We know, here comes Vegeta with his classic, Damn it! And Moro's like, Your new technique requires you to inflict damage first, yes? I won't make the same mistake twice. So, basically, Vegeta, uh, or Gohan shouts out to Vegeta, and he's like, Uh... Moro must have absorbed 73's abilities, but the rule says that it only lasts 30 minutes. And the Z Fighters are all excited about this. Remember, Goku and Vegeta, they never fought 73. Because Goku was busy training with Mirrors. Vegeta was training on uh, Planet Yardra. But Moro, and I'm getting more used to Moro's new design. Like, when I look at it from this angle, if you look closely, it does look like Moro, you know? But you can see, it, it, you can see similarities to Hit and Cell. So, definitely. But after this chapter, I do kind of like Moro's design a little bit more now. You know, I just think seeing the, the way it looked at first, uh, yeah, it, it was messed up. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm more used to the, uh, the new Moro now more than ever. But we see Vegeta, he tries to attack Moro, but it has no effect. Moro, like he did, like 73 was able to do and to Gohan and Piccolo, uh, we see here. Uh, Vegeta gets his neck grabbed by Moro, and uh, Vegeta has his abilities copied. So, Goku and Vegeta don't know. That's the big thing about 73. 73 was not only powerful, but uh, he could copy abilities like that. So, it's revealed here that Vegeta indeed had his uh, ability copied. Here's a little thing. Goku did not get his abilities copied by Moro in this chapter. I don't know if they're, they're waiting. Maybe they'll do that a little bit later on. But uh, Goku did not get his abilities copied, but Vegeta did. And Vegeta's like, what's going on? So basically, uh, Goku's like, what, the, what did Moro do? And Vegeta's like, uh, 73 is able to copy the abilities. And I think Moro, um, now that he has 73, he was able to copy Vegeta using that copy ability. So now we see Moro takes over the fight. And we see, if you guys saw the early draft pages video I did, Moro does the big 
bang attack. So disrespectful, man. So disrespectful. I thought Vegeta would be able to dodge his own attack. You know, the attack that he created. But I, I guess not. Moro's that much more powerful. So Moro does the big bang attack and it hits Vegeta. And then when we come back, Vegeta's armor is broken in half and he has basically been knocked unconscious. So Vegeta has basically been defeated. So uh, Vegeta fans, I, I can see why you're unhappy, but just wait to see what happens to Goku in a little bit. Um, but basically, uh, this is so disrespectful. Moro says, was that supposed to impress anyone? Such a grandiose name for such an ordinary keyblast. So disrespectful. Come on. Mo Vegeta's Big Bang Attack is on the level of Final Flash and the Gala Gun. Everybody loves it. And you just have Moro come here and just disrespect it and call it a normal key blast. Wow. So, uh, basically, here, oh, this is a big point here. Piccolo's like, if he's got Vegeta's abilities, that means he can use Force Spirit Separation. You guys always had the fuse to dance or the Batari earrings and other means of combining as a last resort. But those would be rendered useless now. So now it is revealed that Goku and Vegeta cannot use fusion because since Moro has Vegeta's abilities copied, so Moro can now use Vegeta's spirit separation attack, right? Goku and Vegeta, even if they were to fuse into Gogeta or Vegito, Moro could use the spirit separation technique on Gogeta or Vegito and defuse them just like that. So that's just Tortaro and Toriyama saying Fusion will not be appearing in this arc. Unless, you know, Moro goes back to normal or something like that. But we will not be seeing Gogeta or Vegito here. And I kind of predicted that last chapter. But we see Dende. Remember, Boma and the rest of the gang are watching on Kami's lookout. And uh, basically, they're concerned. Boma sees that her husband's been taken down. And uh, Dende, uh, I don't know. Can we can Dende look like an adult for once, please? Like why like why does like every single arc Dende looks like a freaking kid? Dende uh, reveals that he's gonna go down and heal uh, the rest of the Z fighters. Um, so I like how in this arc everybody's getting involved because most is super, other than like you know the tournament of power and uh, resurrection F arc and a little bit of the uh, universe six tournament. Most of super is mainly focused around Goku and Vegeta. But here, everybody's involved. The Z Fighters, even Dende, and the rest of them are getting involved because they're doing, they're using any resources necessary to try to take Moro down. So we see Dende, he, uh, he starts to head towards Earth. We also see Krill, and I like this. Krill using uh, his energy concealing because he, know, he knows Moro can sense his energy. So Krillin uh, conceals his energy. He chooses not to fly. He's making his way slowly to the battlefield with a bag of sensu beans. And it is revealed that Krillin had the sensu beans the entire time, but uh, he forgot to give them to Goku when Goku first came to the battlefield. And I think that was chapter uh, 59. So definitely I like there. They could have gave Goku the sensu beans right away, but you know they wanted to really make this look like a desperate situation. So we see Gohan and Piccolo, the ultimate tag team. Um, they power up once again to attack Moro, but Moro stomps them out easily. Two on one, it doesn't even matter. We see uh, Moro send uh, Gohan flying in the air and uh, uh, send Key Blast his way. Piccolo uses the stretchy arms, all right? His, one of his uh, unique abilities. He uses his stretchy arms to grab a hold of Moro's legs, and I like that. Because one thing, if you watch the Dragon Ball Super anime, up until I would say about the Goku Black Art, one thing I didn't really like is most of the choreography for the fights was this kick, kick, punch, kick, elbow. Like, I didn't like that. But in the manga, especially in this arc, the choreography, you know, the way the fights are choreographed, amazing. Really good. I got to give Tortaro credit there. Even though when Tortaro does stories, it is questionable how he writes them. But his artwork and the way he choreographs these fights, absolutely beautiful. So, uh, we see Piccolo. Uh, Moro sends a key blast at Piccolo, but Piccolo's like, I won't let you go even if you keep, even if you kill me. And then Moro, this is badass right here. Moro says, huh, you haven't realized that I'm keeping you alive? I can kill you at any moment. You people are my meal, you know. So the only reason why everyone else is alive, Moro could have killed them anytime, but he wants to devour all their energy for pure satisfaction. 
So Moro, he, his plan is to defeat all the Z fighters and then devour their energy. And then he's going to devour Earth and then, you know, eat Earth. So, you know, Moro, the planet eater here, man. This is just crazy, bro. This is crazy. So it is revealed why Moro's not killing them yet. Because he wants to devour their energy first. And remember, Moro only eats for pure satisfaction. He gets stronger just as a side effect. Which is wild in itself. But I love this right here. So as Piccolo is trying to use the stretchy arms to hold Moro in place. We see Gohan. He's doing like uh, the uh, his own version of Goten's Galactic Donuts technique. To also help restrict him. And then Piccolo's like, unleash it now Goku. And Goku comes out of nowhere with an instant transmission. Full power Super Saiyan Blue Kamehameha Wave. He fires it. Moro using the one hand. That he has free blocks it but goku is able to overpower you know moro using his full power this dude moro then walks right up to goku and he's this brings up multiple things why does every main villain have regeneration zamasu cell boo we haven't had a main villain since Frieza that didn't have regeneration. It's like Torotaro and Toriyama. Every villain that comes around and don't count Hit or Jiren or Broly because those weren't villains. They're just antagonists. Every actual real villain that they put, it's like they have to have regeneration because we have to make it harder for Goku and the others to be able to defeat them. Like, come on, bro. But anyway moral regenerates like this is crazy in itself he regenerates his arm while impaling goku right through the chest this is so graphic bro goku goes right after right out of super saiyan blue back to his base form and you can basically see he falls unconscious and he is near death near death we haven't seen this is dragon ball type of violence we don't see this type of violence in super like, ah, uh, remember when Piccolo did this to Goku back when they first fought in the world tournament? Like, we rarely ever see this level of violence in Dragon Ball anymore. So it's great to see that violence come to life here, but poor Goku, bro. People talk about Vegeta getting his ass beat. Goku's been getting his ass kicked by Moro since the beginning of this arc. Remember, Moro defeated Goku without Goku even transforming way back at the beginning? Because remember, Moro, you know... Was, stole Goku and Vegeta's energy without them knowing then now here you have that happening again plus so forget about chapter 59 and 60 Moro defeated Ultra and Omen Goku twice because Goku's stamina issue absolutely ridiculous bro so basically it is revealed the reason why Moro hasn't killed the Z fighters is he plans to devour all their energy because remember Moro devours energy as for satisfaction and pleasure it's a side effect that he has to get stronger from it which is crazy but then we see Gohan he gets angry here I wish Gohan would have got more punches bro Gohan comes flying at Moro and he does a couple punches he does a couple kicks but it has absolutely no effect you know giving Gohan a moment like this where he wants to avenge his father and he gets angry would be so great but, you know, they wrote this, they wrote Moro and made him so OP that Moro just goes, boom, backhands. And now, like father, like son, both Goku and Gohan are down for the count. Are down for the count, excuse me. So then, now, Piccolo and Jacko are the only ones that left. And then we see here Dende. Dende gets in communication with Piccolo. And it is revealed that Dende is heading towards the battlefield to heal uh, the Z fighters and even though that would that should make Piccolo happy but because Moro has Piccolo's abilities from 73 uh, Moro can hear their conversation as well so basically now Moro knows that Dende is on the way to help the Z fighters so what Moro does and this is badass Moro like I said Moro may be the smartest villain of all time in, at least in Dragon Ball. This guy Moro's IQ is on another level. So Moro. 
Um, Moro, he, it's, he's not, it's not that he's afraid of Dende, but he doesn't want to take any chances. So Moro makes a barrier around the battlefield so that Goku, Vegeta, none of them can escape. So the only people in this barrier are uh, Piccolo, the Z Fighters, and Moro. So this is wild. So no one else can get in. So we see Dende gets over to the battlefield, but he cannot get in because of the barrier. Absolutely crazy. We also see Krillin, who is making his way to the battlefield with the Sensu Beans. Now he can get into the barrier as well. I'm, 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 I want to know if Majin Buu was there. Couldn't Majin Buu like yell to break the barrier or something? I don't know. But we see 17 and 18. They tried to double team Moro. This is badass. But Moro not even looking at them does a two-handed one finger beam attack and sends both of them flying so both now 17 and 18 are knocked out so now piccolo is the only one piccolo apologized to jacko for having to get involved in the earth's battle but jacko says don't give me that nonsense you know i'm the uh i'm supposed to be uh the one that watches over the earth you know, Earth is in his jurisdiction. So if Earth is doomed to die, you know, I have to go down with that ship. Plus, Jacko escaped, or Moro escaped from the Galactic Prison. So this was the Galactic, this was the Galactic Prison's issue that became Earth's issue. So basically, that's that. So Piccolo kind of lasts for a second because Piccolo plans. It looks like he's going for a light, uh, a light grenade attack. You know. Remember that move Piccolo did on Android 17 way back in Dragon Ball Z? Or no, it wasn't 17, it was Cell. Uh, so Piccolo plans to do the attack here. The reason why he didn't do it before is because he was worried that it would cause major damage to the Earth. But now that the barrier's in place, he doesn't have to worry about going full power. So right before he unleashes the attack, this artwork is absolutely beautiful. Basically, Piccolo gets special beam cannon through the heart by Moro. So, artwork is incredible, but damn, this dude Moro is something else, for real. Like, look at this, look at this man. Like, Moro's using Piccolo's abilities more than he uses Vegeta's. We've seen Piccolo use the hearing ability, the regeneration, and now he's using Piccolo's special beam cannon against him. So now, all the Z-Biters are down, and Jackal is the only one left. Dende now is sad and he's getting emotional because this is awful. You know, he's supposed to be the god of earth, but now he, he he can't do anything. He's helpless in this situation. And he's like, some god of earth I am. But at that moment, we see the barrier open up and it is revealed that somebody in angel clothes, it looks like Whis. I think this is Whis here because of the spear. I don't think Mirrors has a spear like that. I could be wrong, but... We see Whis here with the spear. Plus, Dende's never met Mirrors before. At least I don't think. So, definitely, I think this is Whis here with Beers. I think Beers and Whis have arrived to the battlefield. And then, if you see here, as Moro's about to kill Jackal, this guy Moro's like, your energy is probably foul t t uh, tasting. Which is, come on, how, how much more disrespectful can Moro be, to be honest? Come on, bro. But, we see, as Jackal fires off a couple beams attack, Moro's, you know, not even worried about it. Moro's gonna kill. You can see as uh, Jackal fires off his beam, we see a second one come flying at Moro on that second. That's really good paneling right there. And Jackal's like, huh? Did I do that? But no, it is revealed that Mirrors has arrived to the battlefield, and Moro says, you, you embalmed that shot with your own energy. So Mirrors put his own key energy into the, the gun. Which is crazy, so, I don't know, if Mirrors did appear in his angel clothes, he must have changed into his Galactic Patrol clothes really quickly. But I think Beerus and Whis are on the battlefield, and Mirrors is there now too. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens, because remember, Mirrors is an angel, at least that's what we know, right? Maybe Mirrors gave up his angel clothes to become a full-blown mortal, maybe, but I don't know. But it's going to be interesting. I hope Mirrors is not the one to defeat Moro. I still think uh, this chapter or this arc will end. We still, I think, yeah, I still think we have maybe like two or three more chapters. But uh, still, man, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Mirrors is on the battlefield. And we'll have to see if he can do anything to help the Z Fighters take down 
tomorrow. It's going to be interesting. We just got chapter 62, and now we have to wait a uh, whole month for chapter 63. I'll probably do another video on this in the next couple days just to discuss um, what could happen here with Mirrors versus Moral because I have some theories, I have some ideas going on in my head. But uh, definitely, I'll do a discussing video on that. So make sure you guys look out for that in the next couple of days. But I'm loving this arc. Love this chapter. Moral is a complete beast. The way I want Moro to get taken down, to be honest, I want more to get taken down by Goku and Vegeta together. Because Goku and Vegeta have taken the, the, the most damage from Moro. So what I want to happen is, I want Goku and Master UI and Vegeta in Evolve Super Saiyan Blue to fly at Moro together and impale him. Because that's Moro's thing. Moro impaled Goku, he impaled the Namekian, he impaled Raspberry, remember the Frieza soldier that helped Moro get the Dragon Balls on Namek? And he also impaled Majin Buu. So it would be such justice for Moro to get impaled to end this entire arc. I would love that. And then as Moro is bleeding out and dying, he just looks at Goku and Vegeta. And then Goku and Vegeta say something badass like, "How you were never going to devour this. You, you'll never be able to devour this planet as long as we're protecting it. Something like that as Moro passes out and dies. I feel like that would be amazing. But let me know what you guys thought of this chapter. This chapter was amazing in my opinion. I loved it. I'm um, hopefully you guys enjoyed do doing the live reaction slash read along with me. If you guys want me to continue doing this, I will. Just leave a like, subscribe, show me guys that you want me to continue making these types of videos. Other than that guys, that's all I got for you guys today. I'm going to get out of here. Like I said, I'll be doing more discussing videos on this chapter because there's so much to unpack. You know, I got so many video ideas flowing through my head right now. But um, I'll see you guys later. Stay safe and healthy, guys. Peace.